All right. So the challenge we are looking for is with respect to machine learning uh, function orchestrator, which is one of the uh, upcoming uh, ITU specifications. And uh, what we are looking for, we are looking for reference implementations for the specific concepts which are desired by MLFO. Okay, so this is the agenda for today's presentation. Uh, I will give a, a kickstart kick start with the background and uh, we should be followed by different functionalities uh, of MLFO and uh, MLFO architecture. And most importantly, I will discuss the specific concepts which we are looking for for the challenge. Uh, and I will illustrate those challenge in form of sequence diagrams for better understanding. And uh, then uh, briefly, I will discuss the reference implementation challenge and uh, followed by evaluation criteria and uh, uh, participation and submission guidelines. And at, then at the end, I will discuss briefly about the timeline. So uh, what MLFO is, or so what is the background, why we need MLFO? So what's the major motivation? So uh, currently most of the network operators, they are, if they want machine learning functionality in their network, uh, they, they need to rely on different data scientists to create an ML pipeline. The okay, creation of an ML pipeline maybe is, is, is not, is not a one-time job, so it's, it's not something like that. You created an, an, an a ML pipeline, your turn, no. So if we have an ML pipeline, of course, proper management and orchestration is required as well. And this is one of the major challenge which is experienced by data scientists. So if ML pipeline is not orchestrated or managed it properly, it can uh, result in bottleneck, which can of course, uh, uh, is not good for the overall operation of the network. Uh, another challenge which MLFO tries to address is uh, uh, is uh, uh, is something uh, uh, from the uh, which which is actually clear from the investigation of diverse use cases, which has been discussed uh, in uh, wide IMT 2020 use case document. Now these use cases they are not relying on a single machine learning framework, or they are not they're not using only one machine learning libraries. So for example, some use cases, they may require deep learning based deployment, some machine learning, some use cases, they just can work around uh, tree based methods and some are okay with the linear models as well. And uh, these implementation of these uh, uh, frameworks or these solutions, right now currently data scientists, they are lying on different big data handling tools and libraries. And these libraries, understanding them, using them, and managing them is time consuming, and it requires a set of specialized tools, which is, which is, which is one of the major challenge. Another issue is uh, uh, right now, whatever current uh, ML pipeline solutions or orchestration solutions are available, they are not integratable with the recent ML frameworks proposed by ITU. So for example, ML Sandbox, Serving Engine, ML Marketplace. So these solutions, they are not directly integratable with these ML frameworks. And currently there is no standardized uh, machine learning orchest uh, orchestration mechanism available. So this can result in complex and expensive machine learning pipelines which can even make difficult the handover between different ML pipeline nodes, which can result in bottleneck. It can also result in different production issues. For example, they can be glue core, they can be hidden dependencies, they can be feedback loops. And other typical challenges or traditional challenges with respect to machine learning pipeline may include machine learning model update, chaining, evaluation, pipeline supplying, deployment, and management and orchestration of ML pipeline instances across the network. Currently, there are some efforts from big players, for example, Uber, uh, Netflix, and uh, Google, in terms of uh, orchestration capabilities. However, these big players, they are just offering in-house uh, ML orchestration platforms or mechanisms only. So first of all, the major limitation is these in-house uh, ML orchestration mechanisms, they don't address the diverse requirements of uh, diverse use cases as discussed in IMT 2020 use cases document. Secondly, they are not integratable with the recent ML frameworks proposed by ITU. 
uh, that is uh, ML Sandbox, Serving Engine, ML Marketplace, and Data Handling Framework. So these solutions are not directly integratable with them. And they're heavily expensive. And uh, uh, without, even with significant investments, and sometimes there are no actual benefits which can be realized within an industry settings. So what MLFO can do, and what are the functionalities which are implemented by the MLFO? So these functionalities can include from monitoring and management of ML pipeline to deployment, optimal placement of ML pipeline nodes, and uh, intent-based specifications to abstract uh, the underlay complexities from the network operators and uh, uh, interoperable integration of uh, data handling, ML marketplace, serving engine uh, frameworks. And uh, similar to an NFBO, MLFO uh, aims to decouple uh, machine learning functions from the underlying uh, network. Now, this is something, uh, the major components of machine learning function orchestrator. So we have uh, model management, data management, uh, pipeline management, closed loop system, intent and policy management, and communication management. So these are major functionalities uh, which are fulfilled by MLFO. With respect to model management, so these are uh, prime uh, uh, requirements or functionalities uh, which are offered by MLFO. So uh, MLFO can support various learning mechanisms and they can vary from supervised to unsupervised to semi-supervised. And there can be various training mechanisms uh, varying from offline to online training. And uh, this module can also, should also have to address with the uh, uh, machine learning pipeline deployment in consultation with the policies as specified by the operators. And this module, uh, can also publish ML profile as can be required by other ML frameworks proposed by ITU. And uh, it, can, uh, uh, it can control and initiate uh, automated testing of ML pipeline or model as well before it, can be uh, before it can be deployed for actual predictions. Then ML pipeline chaining, and uh, because uh, uh, this, uh, this part, uh, this function will actually look for chaining multiple pipelines uh, to achieve certain uh, requirements based on different constraints and then model evaluations in terms of uh, operator specified KPIs and then operations on ML functions. So for example, when to start an ML function, when to stop or when to pause it. So different function operations on ML functions are being controlled by this uh, module as well. The second one is data management module. So data management module covers uh, various functions uh, varying from data collection to uh, data storage. So it will also address any pre-processing if it is required, configuration of any data sources uh, uh, based on the data model specified, management of metadata, and uh, associate uh, with, any, with, with a given use case, uh, uh, associate data models based on the requirements and constraints as specified in the intent. And then for data collection or for output or uh, output, there should be appropriate synchronization, which must be addressed by this module as well. Then this module is also looking for data model mapping. So it can uh, map uh, any uh, technologically specified uh, data model in the intent to generic model, and then the management of data storage as well. The third module, which is really important, is with respect to machine learning pipeline uh, management. So this module is responsible for management or orchestration of ML pipelines. So based on the policies, based on the requirements, based on the constraints, this module can interact with the previous two modules, uh, that is model management and data management, and it can create, modify, or delete ML pipeline. The fourth module is, uh, uh, will monitor the performance of the overall modules of the machine learning function orchestrator. So it can monitor and uh, optimize uh, data management or model management modules. And it, can, it, it will also try to ensure like the operation of the MLFO is energy efficient. So it means uh, uh, they can be, uh, they can be, it's looking for some light, uh, lightweight solutions instead of some heavy uh, models to save energy. 
The resilient operation is another objective which should be which is achieved by a closed loop system uh, and uh, it can achieve this objective through the distributed operation of uh, it can deploy uh, redundant nodes ml uh, pipeline nodes or in a, which are deployed in a distributed manner uh, so to ensure like uh, mlfo still works if uh, some ml pipeline is still uh, works in operation even if some nodes they fail it would this module will also handle any metering events any security and privacy concerns and it can also interact with the sandbox framework to evaluate any model and it this module will also make sure to consider any overhead uh, consider overhead uh, for the ml pipeline uh, deployment or creation this module uh, addresses uh, intent and policy uh, policies uh, management so intent specification is some, uh, one of the major uh, benefits which mlf will provide so operators they can specify the requirements and constraints in form of an intent and uh, intent is actually providing an abstraction uh, to the uh, operators from the underlying network complex days and then this module will also ensure uh, to consult any operator specified uh, policies uh, which are required for model deployment or for data collection or for data, for data storage and it, it will also ensure if any framework like serving engine or ml sandbox they need an ml profile so this module can also ensure provision of ml profile communication management module uh, is uh, important in terms of uh, supporting your data formats and protocols which are required for interaction between ml pipeline nodes and it will also regulate interoperable knowledge transfer between different network operators and it, it can also allow allow the subscription of trained models which can be used in, uh, for other similar use cases and this module will also support a technology specify uh, specific interfaces which are required to interact with the ml underlay so this is the overall architecture uh, for the mlfo so we can see like uh, uh, mlfo is taking ml intents as an intent and we have an ml intent parser which is actually parsing the requirements constraints and data models from the ml intent and storing it is in form of an ml profile which can be later published and which can be uh, requested by other modules as well so we can see here we have data management module which is handling all the uh, all the requirements we discussed earlier with respect to data management and we have pipeline management module which is uh, addressing uh, uh, pipeline creation modification monitoring and relation which we discussed already and then we have an important or the core component which is model management uh, which uh, uh, can select or reselect a model configure different models train or retrain them chain them and evaluate them this is some stuff we discussed already closed loop system is actually responsible to monitor the overall operation of uh, data management and model ma management modules and it can interact with the uh, you know, uh, serving engine framework as well to optimize these modules communication management module is responsible to ensure interaction uh, with the simulated ml underlay and ml underlay or communication with uh, any other external uh, external frameworks uh, for example ml marketplace or ml sandbox in consultations with the policies which are specified by the policy management module so this is the overall architecture which fulfill all those requirements which has been discussed earlier now these are the specific concerns we are looking for at yeah, this challenge so uh, we are looking uh, some uh, simple implementations of any of these specific concepts so for example this is one specific concept which is illustrating data collection uh, so we can see how data collection works here so based on the uh, ml profile which is uh, which is actually uh, worked out by the uh, uh, intent parser so based on the ml profile appropriate data model can be fetched from the metadata store and data sources can be configured based on this data model and based on this configuration once data sources are configured data collection can be initiated and before data collection there must be a consultation with the policies which are specified with respect to uh, with respect to data retention or data management or data storage 
The second uh, specific concept which we are looking for is data pre-processing. So uh, mostly or sometimes, sometimes actually uh, that your data is not ready to go for the training or to be fed to the model. So in that case, pre-processing is required. So based on the ML profile, data can be pre-processed as well. So this is uh, another one of the specific concepts we are looking for. Another, another specific concept which is important is model training. So uh, in this case, based on the ML profile, uh, and we assume data is uh, already ready to go for training. So data can be loaded, and then this data appropriate model can be selected based on the ML profile, and then a model can be trained and returned back to the pipeline management module. So this is, the, this is uh, one of the concepts we are looking for. And this is another simple concept where a, actually uh, a model can be selected. So in this case, uh, model management module can interact with the ML marketplace. And based on the ML profile, uh, ML marketplace can provide a uh, models pool and model management module can select the model from this pool based on the constraints and requirements as specified in the ML intent. Uh, then there can be there, there is another specific concept which is with respect to optimization flow. So in this case, based based on the performance of the uh, pipeline node, uh, there can be a need for optimization. So in that case, if uh, uh, optimization is required, so pipeline management module can interact with the serving engine and can request for optimization. And uh, serving agent can optimize the pipeline. Or ML pipeline node and can return the optimized node back. Model deployment is another specific concept. So uh, based on the ML profile, uh, we can deploy the ML model. So before deployment, however, a proper consultation with the policies must be made. So we need to check with the appropriate policies which are in there for the model deployment. And after consulting the policies, model can be uh, deployed on the ML underlay. In, co uh, in coordination with the NFPO. Another specific concept is ML pipeline creation. So uh, based on uh, uh, the re request received uh, for the pipeline creation, uh, uh, a pipeline can be created across the model management and data mo management module in consultation with the policies as specified by the policy management module. Pipeline testing. So before you want to deploy the ML pipeline, you may want to test it. So yes, it is possible. So once a pipeline is created, of course, model management and data management module, uh, uh, pipeline management module can interact with the ML sandbox and can evaluate the ML pipeline in terms of its uh, uh, in terms of operator specified KPIs. Uh, apart from uh, the training which is uh, offered by the MLFO, there can be some training or retraining offered by the sandbox as well. So MLFO can interact. Uh, and coordinate with the ML sandbox to train or retrain a model based on the ML profile. So ML sandbox uh, framework, which is uh, the recent uh, recent ITU uh, upcoming recommendation, the model can be trained. And uh, uh, MLFO can also interact with the ML marketplace. So given that like uh, we have uh, an optimized model in hand, and that model has approved performance in terms of uh, operator KPIs. This model can be updated or uploaded to the ML marketplace to, to make sure it's uh, highly available. MLFO can also handle uh, various asynchronous operations, which can be uh, triggered by different ML frameworks like serving engine, sandbox, and uh, market uh, uh, data handling framework or intel, uh, intelligence framework. So those, they can trigger any asynchronous frameworks and uh, in consultation with the policies, MLFO can execute uh, those asynchronous uh, uh, operations. So uh, this is, uh, these are the specific concepts we are looking for, but these are not all the specific concepts. Uh, 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 these concepts can cover anything which, which vary uh, from any of these uh, functionalities. So specific concepts can cover any of these functionalities which MLFO is currently offering. So uh, with respect to the challenge, what we're looking for, we are looking for 
the implementation of specific concepts. These specific concepts are include but are not limited to ML intent handling. So where you take an ML intent and parse into different constraints and requirements and uh, any data models which has been specified by the operator. Then any model management, uh, 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 any model management aspects, for example, selection, retraining, training, and deployment. And for this particular spec, we don't require any data set. So only maybe metadata is only, you know, should suffice only uh, for the model training and uh, deployment, uh, mo model deployment, not for training, of course, you can use any data set which is available to you. And then ML for can interact with the ML marketplace as we discussed uh, for the model update or uh, for the model selection, it, can, it should interact with the ML marketplace and then it can handle any asynchronous operations triggered by any other ML frameworks and any other concepts which, which I discussed earlier. Okay, so uh, in terms of evaluation, uh, we have set some basic criteria. So the overall uh, evaluation or the competition schedule is divided into two phases, phase one and phase two. In phase one, uh, phase one is worth of 40 marks. And uh, what we are looking for is selection of uh, uh, concept demo with the uh, details of design methodology including use cases and architecture diagrams and any details of the test setup. And this, this is worth of 40 marks. The second phase, the second phase is uh, worth of 60 marks. And what we are looking for is a report and present, uh, presentation. And the detailed report should include a demo problem statement, motivation, challenges, and uh, flow charts, results, and discussions. Uh, what is most important is the demo. Uh, completion. So there must be a demonstrable solution which is which should be submitted. So there should be proof of concept which maps actually MLF specification uh, with respect to any specific concepts as we discussed earlier. Participation and submission guidelines as discussed with the earlier presentations, uh, they are they, they are mostly same. So you need an you need an ITU account to register for ITU AI ML by uh, ML uh, challenge and uh, wh while you are completing uh, for this participation survey you need to go for ITU ML 5GPS uh, 5 04 to, to go for this challenge. You can work in, as an individual or you can go for a, a team of maximum four members. Uh, for submission uh, we, we will set up a GitHub repository shortly, which should be available to host the submissions from the contestants. If you want one, more information about this challenge, please refer to uh, this link and there are detailed uh, instructions available on this link as well. Timeline, uh, with respect to timeline, uh, the registration deadline has been extended to 21st August 2020 and uh, global round duration is from August to November 2020. Phase one submission is uh, for 20th of September and phase two, 20th of October. And evaluation should be between uh, October 30th and November 15th. And there should be an announcement of winners around November 30th. And awards and presentation should be sometime in December. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any question, questions, please ask. Thank you so much, Shagufta, for the clear explanation of the machine learning function orchestrator and the challenge itself, well, problem statement number 24. Now it's time for the Q&A. So I'd like to invite my colleague Vishnu. Uh, Vishnu, welcome and good evening. Thanks Thomas. And uh, thanks to Shagufta for laying out the ground rules. Thank you so much. And uh, I have to say, it's always a pleasure to talk to Shagufta. She's a long time uh, colleague of mine. Uh, 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 we we work together for uh, editing. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank there you are, are several questions coming here. I will uh, mix up them along with my own questions and uh, let us see what happens. First question is on slide nine, I think. Uh, it says, uh, I think your slide talked about ML profile. 
what is ml profile so i, I think in your slide you had uh, uh, you had mentioned about ml profile uh, yes. could you uh, yes please go slide yes. 9 please and, uh, yes, and i think yeah, uh, the question it, is yeah. what is ml profile publish ml profile yes we have ml profile here so i will go over here on this slide to explain uh, to answer the question please so ml profile is based on the ml intent so your ml intent consists of uh, uh, different requirements and constraints and sometimes even there can be data models as well so ml profile is created based on the ml intents however it uh, it, it will also include uh, uh, it can also include different policies which should be with respect to that particular use case which are specified by the operators and it can also include any other configuration parameters as well which are uh, required uh, uh, for, for uh, with respect to ml underlay with respect to ml underlay so uh, uh, loosely speaking I, I should say it is requirements constraints and data models so so they are they, they are called it as a M ml profile Thank you. Actually, I would like to jump to another question here, uh, which is talking about template. Uh, template for the intent, and uh, I think a similar question can be asked about the profile. Is there a predefined schema or template for the intent or for the purpose of challenge? Is there any specific underlay? So let's let's take the first question first. Uh, is there any predefined schema like um, like an XML format or or uh, something like that? Do you have in mind, or the participant can define her own uh, schema? Participants, they're free to define their own schema. Uh, I, I do remember like in our specification and email intent format is there, but it's free from any, uh, free from any uh, language. So you can define your own schema. There is, no, there is no constraint on that. For contestants, they are free to write their own schemas or like on their intents in any form they want. Actually, that that, uh, that uh, you mentioned specification. So I'm going to ask this question first. That is, uh, say, let's say I'm a student uh, and uh, I have been being exposed to the specifications that you're seeing. This this figure that the the, the figure that you are showing that looks really scary to me. <laughs> For example, right. So how should I approach it as a student, as a first comer? Could you give some hints as to how to solve this problem? Because I don't know the concepts that you mentioned. There are there are several call sequence diagrams, several blocks that I see here. It's mm -hmm. all very scary to me. Could you give us some hints as to how to solve this problem? How to approach this problem? First of all, uh, like we can see different blocks here. Yes, it looks scary. I agree, but they they, they are not depend. Uh, whoever want to target them, just take a individual component only. So, for example. If I just want to go for something which is relevant within the model uh, management only, so maybe I will just consider about one of these components, so model selection only. So maybe I will go uh, pick up the specific concept, which is model selection only. So maybe I will start implementing it uh, for the challenge. In the same way, model training, maybe you will pick up any module and you want to train it. And same way, model evaluation or model deployment. So it means don't uh, see this whole architecture as a challenge. No, rather uh, we discuss different specific concepts like data collection. It's simple in uh, in itself. Like you have to uh, ensure data collection. Nothing else. You when you when you're thinking about this specific concept, you don't need to worry about pre-processing or training. You just have to focus on data collection only. The same way for this specific concept, maybe you have to just focus on model selection only. So it means for the implementation, uh, like uh, uh, you have to think only about the specific concepts which are offered as a challenge only. Don't don't worry about this whole architecture. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that's a, that's a very important point. In fact, in fact, uh, uh, I want to ask a follow up question. In fact, Abhishek is asking exactly that question. You know, uh, my professor, uh, for example, suppose I'm a student and my professor asks, uh, my advisor wants me to work on, let us say, autonomous driving or uh, let us say handwriting recognition or let us say you know that there, there are several machine learning related problems out there so he uh, the, the 
the, my advisor's uh, focus area is one of these use cases. How does it tie into all this? I, I, I have a specific focus, uh, for example, security or you know, model selection or, uh, or something like that. Can I, uh, can I pick up that a specific problem and uh, demonstrate that with respect to uh, using any one of these, one of these uh, concepts that you explained? for MLFO? Uh, yes, please, sure, it is possible. So for example, we, we can uh, deal with any use case because we are considering ML intent is there. So any use case. So of course, any use case will have some requirement. There will be some constraints. And it's the same thing, which is ma uh, mapping there. Like so you can fetch a ML profile based on the use case. So for example, if it's autonomous driving, so of course there are sure some requirements, there are sure some constraints and there can be some data models or maybe it's not there. So uh, of course we can create an ML profile for any use case. It can be from security relevant use case. It can be autonomous driving, uh, driving any use case. And rest of the stuff then depends on the ML profile we can see. So once we have an ML profile, uh, uh, you can uh, go for any of uh, implementation or, or any of the specific concepts, for example, model selection, model training or model deployment. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, that that actually brings us to the next question about uh, uh, what kind of data do I need? Uh, do I need uh, do I need uh, uh, you know 5G network to do it, or do I need uh, some kind of specific simulator to do it? Where do I get the data from? What kind of underlay do I need? Uh, right now, we have given free hand to contestants in terms of data search. So, for example, if someone is going for autonomous driving use case, because we haven't specified any use case. So, contestants, they are free to select their own use case. And of course, with their use case, they need to work out uh, work uh, around the data set as well. Because for this challenge, we don't have any specific data set. So, the data set, they can maybe there's some data set which is already available or maybe they want to go for some simulators. Uh, that's, that's up to the contestants. They have free hand for this case. So no constraint from this challenge in terms of data sets. Because even some aspects of uh, the challenge can be just implemented with the MITA data only. So for example, model uh, deployment, uh, model deployment or model chaining, or let's say even uh, even uh, this is something or model selection. This can be only uh, you can use metadata only. So maybe data set is not required at all for some cases for some specific uh, concepts. Very good. Thank you so much. I want to ask uh, one of my favorite questions. It's right here as well. I'm going to jump to that. The question is that, you know, my lab, uh, uh, for example, if I'm working on a lab, my lab uses TensorFlow or my lab uses PyTorch or, or some other framework. Uh, you know, there are, there are many of them. There are many uh, Tencent, for example, you explained the Uber uh, framework. There are many of those frameworks. Uh, can, I, can I use any of those frameworks? Uh, how, do I, how do I tie into the, the, my favorite, uh, you know, quote unquote, favorite uh, uh, framework, which my lab uses, how do I tie in the, the, the sequence diagrams and the, 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 the uh, framework that you mentioned? How do these uh, relate to each other? Uh, like, <laughs> this is something, uh, anyways, like uh, uh, in terms of libraries, I don't think so we have any constraints because this is just a reference architecture only and uh, it, it, uh, you can implement by using any library or by using any framework. I don't think so there is any constraint with respect to like, we are, we are not providing any guidelines with respect to uh, the frameworks or libraries for implementation purpose. Very so, good, thank, yeah, 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 thank you, thank you so much. So, so, so basically I, I take it that as a contestant, if I if I am competing in this challenge, I can use any tool sets, and as long as I demonstrate a use case and a subset of the functionality using that tool set, to, using that tool set, and uh, and demonstrating that it is aligned with the MLFO functionality, then I, I'm going to win, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that the, yeah, that, that, okay. that, that, that's something we are looking for. Yes, so, so proof of concept, it can be uh, in any language, in any library. 
that that brings us to the next question in terms of interfaces so you show many of these reference points here uh, is there any constraint on the interfaces that i have to use do i need to use a particular type of uh, rest api or can i define my own rest api uh, what is the what is the constraint on these reference points and interfaces that you mentioned again similar to like uh... I discussed earlier with respect to the libraries, we don't have any constraint for the reference points because they are just reference points. However, uh, to implement them interfaces, uh, uh, contestants, they are free again. They can use any APIs available, uh, which source them, which source their requirements or which fits better in their, which are compatible to their libraries. So they're free. They're free to use any. Oh, very good. Thank you because so much. Some of the components, maybe they don't need complicated interfaces. However, there, there can be some complexities involved there as well. So, so they are free uh, to rely on any libraries available. So you mentioned that uh, the mapping, mapping to the MLFO specifications. Could you explain a little bit what you mean by mapping? How do I, as a, as a, as a contestant, how do I map this? Uh, in what format do I map it? And what do I need? Uh, and, and which all documents uh, I need to map? Mapping in terms of like uh, you're saying uh, what contestant should map. Again, uh, I, will, uh, I will reiterate it should be specific concepts. Uh, so for example, any of the functionalities uh, we just want a reference implementation only. So any of the functionality uh, functionalities which are offered by MLFO, a contestant, they just have to implement it. So that's, that's kind of mapping I'm saying. Uh, we don't need a complete uh, mapping with respect to the MLFO architecture, but only a few, a few, a few, a few specific concepts they should be able to demonstrate one of, one of any of those concepts. And, and which documents, please? And, and where do which documents and where do I find them? Uh, the document with respect to, uh, okay, uh, you mean uh, this MLFO specification document? Yeah, yeah. So which, which, uh, whichever uh, ITU documents that I need to, uh, yes, I need yes, to map please. to, yeah. Yes, please. So this is uh, the uh, machine learning fun fun uh, function orchestrator uh, specification that maybe we need because uh, oh, I discussed uh, about uh, ML sandbox, uh, serving engine, ML marketplace. Uh, so those uh, 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 contestants, they are advised to investigate those specifications as well because one of the criteria of our evaluation uh, is mentioned over here. So yes, we have addressability to ITU specifications for, for the MLFO. Some specific concepts we are lying on other specifications as well. So uh, ML sandbox and ML marketplace. Then we have data handling framework. We have uh, you know, we have referred not specifically in this presentation, but in the document uh, intelligence uh, framework as well or serving engine too. So uh, contestants they are advised to uh, just go through all those ITU specifications which are referred for the MLF implementation. Very good. Uh, could you, could you, uh, or do you al already have it? Uh, I don't remember. In your uh, challenge website, do you have a link to this? Uh, to the specification, I'm afraid maybe a link is uh, not available. It's only the document number is mentioned. Per perhaps we can add a link yes. to the FG, FG specification. We can add a link. Yes, that, that's a great idea. I think so, it's missing. So we need to add a uh, reference to this document, yeah. Yeah, I think it will help our student uh, participants at least because you know, 50% or more, more large, number of, large number of people who are in the academia may not know how to access these, uh, uh, these specifications. Uh, okay, uh, so Vishnu, should we provide the link in there or the document link, the document? And the link to the FG's uh, output document is, it's actually, it's, it will be very good. All right, Richard, thank you, yeah, yeah. I will do that. No yeah, the, pu the published ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will do that. Uh, I want to ask, uh, you know, a question which uh, you know, you know, we, we have met this question many times. Uh, that question is, 
uh, what is the difference between uh, NFV orchestrator and ML function orchestrator? Bo both seems to be orchestrators, both seems to be doing, uh, you know, uh, the, the sequence diagrams look the same, similar to me. Uh, and also uh, the in terms of management plane, both are, both are in the management plane. So uh, both are actually using uh, 5G underlays. Uh, so what is the difference between between NFV orchestrator and this one? Uh, machine learning function orchestrator is with respect to machine learning pipeline plays. So NFV of course is with respect to uh, uh, network functionality orchestration. However, machine learning function orchestrator is actually orchestration about machine learning pipeline like ML pipeline nodes. So that's the prime difference. However, they share the essence, like uh, similar to NFVO, MLFO also, uh, uh, like it decouples ML functions from the underlying network. Very good. Uh, thank you so much for us answering that one. Uh, there are some questions about uh, about interface specifications. Uh, so I think we, we answered that. Uh, there are again questions about uh, specific use case. So I think, uh, let me clarify that again. I think we can, uh, the use case, specific use case, for example, NSG, energy saving uh, use case is that, I think that is not important here as you explained. It is uh, important to show that you are able to use the MLFO for the one of the scenarios like model training or selection, and then show the mapping to the specifications that uh, ITU has developed. Am I correct? Did I get that right? Uh, in terms of energy efficiency, like let's say, because this is one of the constraint or sorry, one of the requirement we have to specify like energy efficiency. So, Based on this requirement, MLFO can select lightweight uh, learning machine learning mechanisms as well. So this is one of the objective which ML, MLFO uh, should strive to achieve. That's uh, try to uh, obtain the energy efficient machine learning ML pipeline, energy efficient ML pipeline. So yes, MLFO is currently uh, targeting this 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 requirement as well. So we have, uh, there, sh there should be some policies uh, which can convert the external, uh, which can map the, uh, the, uh, the uh, requirements which are specified by the use case to internal policies. And that internal policies must be energy efficient. Hmm. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, I, want to, I want to ask uh, another question about uh, uh, the future plans, so, you know, uh, yes, we, we have this challenge. Yes, uh, we will we will uh, uh, get good good participation. People people are excited. Participants would come in and solve this problem. Yes, but I also want to uh, go back and look at uh, the work which you are doing. And uh, currently, currently actually, uh, just for the information of other participants. Shagufta just now uh, made a presentation to ITUs. Uh, our, our ongoing meeting just now closed. That is about creation of a work item uh, regarding exactly similar, similar activity. And congratulations, Shagufta, for that. It is uh, successfully created. Could you tell us a little bit more about uh, what is the future of uh, this work? What is this work item? How would uh, uh, how would this uh, proceed? Not not specifically related to the challenge. I just want to understand because there are several uh, several uh, you know research teams. There are several students who listen to your talk, even even this talk uh, uh, later later uh, replay. So uh, they may be looking at uh, this kind of technologies. So that's why I'm asking. Could you tell us a little bit more about that part? Uh, the future works like one of the major questions we have we had in several meetings that uh, that was with respect to distributed implementation of MLFO. So uh, yes, there is a requirement of for distributed version of MLFO as well. However, it needs a different uh, different eye in terms of uh, requirements and constraints. So one of the future works, and I think maybe uh, some some students maybe 
some of the works I think I've seen recently, they were they were they, they are thinking about distributed version of MLF as well. So that is some of the interesting aspect which should be covered because uh, then in that case maybe we need uh, different brokers to be involved uh, between MLF instances. We need uh, specific formats and protocols which mu which should be supported by that that reference uh, reference architecture. So it means uh, there, it, there is a lot to do in terms of distributed operation of uh, the MLFO. Very good. Thank you so much. It looks quite exciting. I want to ask uh, another question from here, which says, will the code which I submit be made public? I, I think you mentioned the GitHub. I think that has to be a, a public repo. So I think the answer is yes, but I will leave it that to you. Another question is, do I still own the code after submission or ITU owns it? I think here we have, uh, uh, we have left it open so far. Uh, we, we have uh, conditions which says that uh, uh you can use it for publications uh you know if you want the whoever is the author can you can use it for publications or uh, any other purposes after uh, uh, you submit the code to us but it will be open uh, in the sense it will be public because the repo is public do i uh, do i do i get that right uh Shakufta? Yes, uh, Vishnu, you are saying right. It should be like that. It should be public, so uh, uh, there can be maximum utilization of the code. 